DXB. It's in the game. I just finished watching Dunkirk, the fantastic realistic depiction uh, of the obviously the Dunkirk evacuation as directed by Christopher Nolan. Now in that we get to see some fantastically realistic air combat between things like Spitfires and Messerschmitt. So I was very much in the mood for an air combat game. And this one of course isn't in that theatre. This is Flying Tigers, which is a game set in and around the Burmese Chinese front in which these particular nations were doing their best to fight against the Japanese war machine shortly after the events of Pearl Harbor. Now this is an area of front, sort of air combat history that I wasn't that aware of. This was a group of basically volunteer airmen and support crews uh, that left their relevant nations uh, air forces so that they could f go over to this part of the world and fight and support the Chinese in trying to stop the Japanese uh, war machine from taking over their nation at the sort of mid part of World War II. And interestingly enough, considering that Burma was a part of this, my grandfather served in the Navy albeit over in and around the waters around Burma during this period. So to me there was a connection. I just watched Dunkirk. I'm in the mood for some combat to do with World War II. Obviously we've seen a little bit of a resurgence of this in the FPS genre recently with Call of Duty going back to World War II. But I thought to myself, I haven't played a flying game with sort of old school aircraft like this in quite some time. So Flying Tigers comes along here and it gives me an accessible, uh, really kind of easy to understand flying game which has got two control schemes which you either be realistic or arcadey. I played predominantly arcadey but I played a little bit in the realistic stuff as well to get an idea for this and you know what there's not a lot of games like this available on consoles right now. On PC there are all the classics from throughout the years of uh, flying games so I can imagine in that market this game would feel a little less accessible but the history has been thought out there's lots of quite witty written content in here that really helps convey the sense of place and the sense of sort of setting for this you know in this conflict and this particular front of the war that most people I think wouldn't be at all uh, knowledgeable about and that you're going to get to fight in locations against forces that you haven't done before a real mixture of American British and Indian Air Forces are present here. You get to do bombing runs, you get to do, you know, dogfighting, intersecting bombers, you name it, you get to do this. Uh, naval combat, uh, attacks against fortified ground installations. It's in here, it's well done. I think the models of the planes are nice. I think the fact that the environments are well modelled as well, the trees and stuff like that, and buildings are quite well done. And you have to remember this is an indie game from a small team with a small budget, and for what that is and for the price they're asking, there's a lot of content in here. The single player mode is story driven. You can go through a campaign with various missions, with dialogue and voice acting, you name it, it's in there. And there are challenges in there as well, which are sort of time based or leader based, leaderboard focused uh, experiences. Um, and then there's just sort of have a dogfight, go up in various locations from the campaign and, and just see how many people you can take out by yourself. And then there's multiplayer. Now, sadly, at this time, due to me reviewing this game uh, sort of ahead of release, I'm not able to test out the multiplayer and the netcode. But fingers crossed that all works well because the game that we have here presented to us at the moment, while maybe not as polished and next gen as some might hope, considering its price point, considering its scope and what it's trying to achieve and how it's trying to achieve it, I was very impressed with Flying Tigers. Um, I know this game's been about for a while in early access on PC, but for a console release here on Xbox, which is the version I'm looking at right now, I thought, you know, with the things like Dunkirk, with the fact that this isn't necessarily a theatre of war you've experienced before, and all those sort of factors combined, I had a lot of fun with Flying Tigers. I also felt, thought that I might have learned something as well. And I got to experience, you know, getting up there in my Spitfires and my Hurricanes and then the uh, Mustangs and other types of aircraft from the American Air Force. And then, of course, if you want, you can even jump into the enemy aircraft and play with them. It's accessible. Yeah, okay, there is like a Matrix-style slowdown mode sometimes you can use to target the enemies and make it a bit easier on yourself. But if you don't want to play with those assists, if you want to play it more simulation, sure, you can do that as well. So I feel like there's a lot of fun to be had here. And if you're looking to jump in to a era appropriate aircraft from World War II and have some fun shooting down the bad guys, I feel like you could go far, far worse places than flying tigers' shadows over China. So I'm going to give it, yeah, I'm going to give it four out of five stars. B X B. It's in the game.